and welcome back to my channel. My name is Blissa. Today I'm so excited to share a new crafty little project with you guys um, and it has to do with mason jars. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys actually have like a ton of these at home and I feel like you know like having the jar itself is definitely a nice and cute way to kind of give your house or like wherever space you're decorating with these a like vintage farmhouse vibes but I definitely think it could go a long way when you customize these even more so I've come up with four different ways that you guys can DIY these jars so the jars themselves and the lids so uh, stay tuned for that and let's go ahead and get on to the video all right guys so first things first we're going to go ahead and start spray painting the jars to prep for all the mini projects that we're gonna do and here I'm using regular glossy white spray paint and clearly make sure you shake the heck out of that can like I'm doing here so that it applies nice and evenly. For the other two jars that I will be painting, I'm going to use a matte finish spray paint and now being the DIYer, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word that I am, I have both types of paints and other colors but I feel like white looks best for all the DIYs that I'm about to show you. But of course, choose whatever color you'd like and what you feel like looks best for your space. Alright guys, so I just finished spray painting the jars and I really wish I brought a hair tie down here because my ass is literally sweating to death because it's 100 degrees outside but uh, we're gonna give it a couple of hours for the mason jars to dry and then we'll go ahead and check up on them and then we'll take them in to do the rest of our projects. For our first project, what you'll need is your mason jar, some twine, and spray paint which we already spray painted all of the jars in the beginning so I'll just cut straight to actually doing it and that kind of goes for the rest of the video as well. So what I'm doing now is taking this piece of rough fabric which feels like the rough side of a sponge to sand down the jar. So if you don't have exactly what I'm holding here you can just use the rough side of the sponge to roughen up your jar. And I think it gives the perfect farmhouse and worn in look that I'm going for that will match perfectly with the twine. Now for the twine, what I'm going to do first is hot gluing the first bit of the twine before I start circling it around the jar. I think it's more secure in that way, but you don't have to use hot glue if you don't have a hot glue gun. And instead, you can just wrap the twine around each other, and that should be tight enough to keep the twine in place. But, just to be sure, I like using a hot glue gun to make sure it stays firmly wrapped and nothing frays away. Then, after that, it's just basically a continuous process of wrapping the twine around the rim of the jar until you reach the very end. Once you've reached the end of the rim of the jar, you want to go ahead and hot glue that area just so that the end of the twine stays secure. But if you aren't using a hot glue gun, then just be sure to tuck away that last bit into the areas where you've already wrapped it around the rim. Go ahead and snip away any excess twine that's left on the jar, and then you're left with a cute little vintage farmhouse type of jar um, and I think you can leave it this way but I prefer to add a little touch to it by adding a cute little bow. Now that you have this cute little jar, you can put anything you want in this, but for me, I like to put my makeup brushes in here, but in order for my brushes not to sink to the bottom of the jar, I crumpled up some paper and stuffed it in the bottom so that my brushes sit nicely above the rim. I think that these jars are the perfect farmhouse look that you can put anything in, like flowers, real or fake. And you could even use this as a plant holder and plant some succulents inside of them. But for me, I love it as a makeup brush jar. And I think it fits perfectly with my vanity. A 
Okay, so next up is my personal favorite of the DIYs, and if you couldn't tell already, it is a mason jar soap dispenser. And for this, it does require some tools like a hammer, a screwdriver, and one of these clipper thingies. Clearly, I don't know my tools, I just use things from my dad's toolbox that works. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first step in this is to take the circular piece off the lid and find the center point and align it with the screwdriver. Then, once you've centered it all, all you need to do is take your hammer and hammer it down. Then you'll see that it creates a little hole that's just enough for you to use that little clipper thingy that I mentioned at the beginning of the video to widen up that circle where your soap dispenser will fit through. You can go ahead and clip off any of the metal pieces that are sticking out just to prevent any cuts or anything like that. If you couldn't tell already from the sun reflection on the lid, but the sun was heavily beating down on me and I decided that I wanted to retreat back inside to finish the rest of the project. Now, once you've created a hole that's wide enough, go ahead and test out your soap dispenser to make sure that it's a snug fit with the lid. And after that, you want to hammer down the raw edges of the metal that's sticking out on the lid just to be safe and make sure nothing is sticking out and might be poking you. For an even secure fit, go ahead and hot glue gun around the edges and place the soap dispenser back on and flip it the other way and hot glue gun the edges as well just to make sure it stays secure and no soap gets in from the bottom. And you're done! Now you can screw on your newly made soap pump onto your mason jar to create a new soap dispenser. I am absolutely in love with this new soap dispenser. I feel like it's perfect for my newly transformed bathroom. I think it looks really cute and really cohesive. And if anything, um, I would have sanded down the jar as well to kind of give it more of that rustic look. But other than that, I think it looks perfect in here. For this next one, we are making a marble-esque effect on our jar, and this one, instead of using a mason jar, I used a regular one without the wording because I think the smooth surface gives a better finish and smoother marbling effect that we want. What you'll first need is to fill a tray with filtered water and your choice of color for nail polish. I changed my mind since the beginning and went for this bright lilac color and also a pastel purple instead. So what you want to do is slowly drip your nail polish into the water and then take a toothpick and drag it across or slowly drag it across the water to create a desired pattern you want. And don't worry too much about how it looks like in the water because I promise it will look way better after we transfer it to the jar. Once you've created the desired design that you wanted, then go ahead and take your jar and swipe it across the surface of the water and the nail polish should stick to the jar creating this really cool marbling effect. Now I think that this DIY turned out pretty cool and I really like the lavender of the marble effect but obviously you can use grey, green, blue, whatever color you like and I think that this jar is perfect to hold pens or pencils and be a sleek jar to leave at your desk. Now that I've done all these DIYs, I'm now left with a bunch of unused lids. But we are going to put them to good use by repurposing them and creating personalized magnets. And I think that this would make an awesome gift, so I selected photos that I'm going to be giving to my dad for Father's Day. And to make these, I first removed the circular portion of the lid and placed it on top of the photo of what I want my magnet to show and traced it with a sharpie. After you trace it, you want to cut it out with the line that you've made. And this photo is from my high school graduation. I chose this photo because I feel like my dad looks super happy and I look super happy. So I felt like this was the perfect photo to give him for Father's Day. And um, yeah, after you finish cutting it, you will get the perfect fit for the lid. 
and it's super easy, super simple, and I just repeated this step for three other photos. Now that you've got all your pieces together, you want to go ahead and hot glue the circular piece to the rim of the lid. And just do that by doing a four dot hot gluing technique, I guess you can call it. <laughs> um, and just hot glue gun that down and press it in firmly to secure it. To secure the photos to the lids, we're going to go ahead and use some good old scotch tape. And we'll just go ahead and fold it, double side it, and paste it onto the lid and stick on our photos. All that's left for us now is to add on the magnets to the back of the lids and I bought these magnets from Michaels but you can honestly find them anywhere on Amazon, Target, anywhere like that. And we are going to go ahead and hot glue the center of the lid on the back side and just stick the magnet on. And what you're left with are the super cool personalized magnets that I think are the perfect gift for anyone, especially someone that you're really close to. And Father's Day is just around the corner, so I do think that this is an awesome idea to give to your dad or give to anyone. And I think it looks awesome on the fridge or you can give it to your dad to take to his work. Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps it up for the end of this video. I hope this gave you some inspiration on how to DIY these mason jars yourselves or make it more personalized and more versatile for your space. Um, and maybe even as a Father's Day gift idea. But yeah, I, I really love mason jars and I have a ton of them at home and I just think it's really cute and really creative way to add a little bit more to your space. But other than that, um, that's pretty much it and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!